When Koreans greet each other, they often say, Did you have lunch? Or did you have dinner? Instead of saying hello. Some say that this kind of greeting originated in the experience of extreme hunger from the Korean War. However, Korean War happened almost 70 years ago. In my opinion, this greeting resulted from our culture that we are so closely related to one another as one ethnic race. If my brother or cousin starves, I may feel guilty and responsible for their hunger. Koreans are all related anyway. So I feel like I have to feed someone if she didn't eat. Eating is that important to Koreans, and most Korean foods are based on the culture of feeding and sharing. Kimchi is one of the most representative foods of Korea. It's not a main dish, but a side dish that accompanies almost every Korean meal. Kimchi is a fermented food made of Nepa cabbage, fermented fish, garlic, and red pepper flakes. It has some similarities with sauerkraut, but with more complicated taste. The texture of Korean cabbage is very strong, so when it's fermented with salt and fish sauce, it can last for a long time in the cold temperature, like in the refrigerator. The red pepper-based marinade is absorbed into the cabbage texture, and the fermentation turns the taste of cabbage attractively sour. Fermented fish or fish sauce and starch porridge help it ferment it, and red pepper flakes and garlics add wonderful depth. You can also add green onions, radish, yellow onion, sugar, pears, and apples to amplify the taste. Sundubu jjigae or Korean soft tofu stew is a spicy stew made with soft tofu and a few vegetables such as zucchini or mushrooms. It or seafood are additional ingredients. Koreans usually use anchovy broth and add chili oil at the end. Chili oil is made of red chili powder and garlic and adds very savory taste to the stew. This stew is truly a comfort food for Koreans. When it's raining or cold, people like to eat sundubu jjigae to warm their bodies and souls as well. Bibimbap is a world-famous Korean food and also known for the late Michael Jackson's favorite Korean food. Bibim means mixing and bap means rice. It's a type of rice bowl topped with various kinds of cooked vegetables and some meat. As bibimbap is one bowl meal, you don't need any side dishes. For eaters, bibimbap may seem like a very simple and convenient food, but for cooks, it's a totally different story. You have to prepare and cook each ingredient separately. So when you have to feed a big group of people at once, Making bibimbap could be a very smart choice. Before eating it, you should mix the rice and the toppings with gochujang and sesame oil. Bibimbap is also very versatile because you can make your own style of bibimbap. You can make it very fancy with tons of cooked vegetables and meat, but you can also make it very humble with a few leftover vegetables. Japchae or Korean grass noodles are among Americans' most favorite Korean dishes. The basic sauce is composed of soy sauce, sesame oil, and sugar. It is characterized by the unique texture of transparent glass noodles made from sweet potato starch and the overall sweet taste of vegetables and meat. I have been making this for many American friends for over 10 years, and most of them liked it. They often ask me how to make it, but they seem to give up learning while listening because the recipe sounds somewhat complicated. Actually, the traditional recipe is quite complicated. To cook the glass noodles, you have to soak, boil, rinse, drain, and stir-fry the noodles. So I try to simplify the process, but still make it delicious. You will just soak and boil the noodle with my recipe. Tteokbokki is made with white cylindrical rice cakes and gochujang seasoning, which includes sugar, 
soy sauce, sesame oil, and so on. Rice cakes are made in a variety of forms, and ordinary rice cakes are desserts which have very sweet taste. But these cylindrical rice cakes for tteokbokki are not sweet at all. Because rice cakes do not have a particular taste, the seasoning and soup around the rice cakes eventually characterize the taste. In addition to the gochujang seasoning, vegetables such as cabbage, carrot, and green onions are added to the soup to amplify the taste. Tteokbokki is one of the most familiar foods to Koreans, and I could say that I was raised on tteokbokki, especially when I was a teenager. There was a small tteokbokki restaurant around my school, and my friends and I went to eat tteokbokki almost every day. Eating tteokbokki after school was our way of beating stress. Bulgogi is grilled or stir-fried beef that is sliced thinly and then marinated with soy sauce, sugar, and sesame oil. Since beef used to be expensive in Korea, bulgogi was a food that we could only enjoy on special days like birthdays or holidays. However, cheaper beef is imported from the United States or Australia nowadays. Bulgogi has become more common. In order to make bulgogi, you have to ask a butcher to slice your beef wafer thin. Or you can just buy a pack of frozen sliced beef at a Korean grocery store. As the beef slice is so thin, any kind of beef can be used for bulgogi. You don't have to buy fancy ribeye steak. Saloin is good enough for bulgogi. Pork bulgogi we will also call it pork jumulok. Jumulok means a tossing of ingredients. So, you gently toss the sliced pork with gochujang marinade and stir fry or grill it. It is very easy. I would use pork neck, and my local butcher advised me to slice pork neck a little bit thicker than beef for bulgogi. Pork is more tender than beef, so you don't have to slice it too thin. You can also use pork sirloin or pork belly. If you cook it over charcoal fire, the taste will also be most fantastic. The recipe is very similar to that of beef bulgogi, but you have to add some red pepper paste to the marinade. This red pepper paste or gochujang goes really well with pork. If you are a spicy food lover, you can add more gochujang or red pepper powder. If memory serves me correctly, puchimge or a Korean pancake was one of the most loved dishes by my American friend. It translates to Korean pancake, but it has no butter or baking powder. It's more similar to fritters, but puchimge better has the water ratio of pancakes. I usually make puchimge with my leftover vegetables in the refrigerator. You can use any kind of vegetables. But Koreans prefer green onions, yellow onion, or chives. These are all relatives of garlic, and they become very sweet and flavorful when cooked. You can make puchimge thick or thin as you wish, like pizza, but my favorite is thin and crispy puchimge. Kimbap is a Korean dish made from cooked rice and other ingredients that are rolled in a sheet of seaweed and served in bite-sized slices. For Koreans, kimbap is stamped with the image of a picnic or autumn sports day of elementary schools. In other words, it is associated with the most pleasing days for children. On the day of a picnic, I would wake up in the morning to find that my mother already made kimbap lunchbox for me. As soon as I opened my kimbap lunchbox at the picnic place, I compared it with my friend's lunchbox. So we decided whose kimbap was the most beautiful or tasty. Now, kimbap places can be found all over the street, so you can buy and eat kimbap anytime. But the taste of my mom's kimbap is incomparable and unforgettable. Budejjigae is a type of stew. 
made with ham, sausage, spam, baked beans, and gochujang based sauce. The stew is usually cooked in the middle of the table and served instantly on the spot. Budaejigae is related to the tragic history of Korean War. During the war, foods were scarce and many Koreans were hungry. So, some Koreans created a stew with the canned rations from the American army bases and available Korean ingredients such as potatoes or kimchi. As you see, spam, sausage, baked beans must have been from American canned foods, and other ingredients are kimchi and any kind of vegetables. So you can improvise, but the spam ham and the spicy sauce are a must. In order to enjoy the real taste of budae jjigae, you must have an empty stomach and feel very hungry. <laughs> <laughs>